There's no indication of what Brooks's future is going to look like with galactosemia. Right now, we have to address every problem individually. So if we see a neurological issue, we go to the neurologist. If we see a vision issue, we go to the ophthalmologist. We don't address the issue at its core. We don't address the galactosemia. We address all the issues it creates. And to me, that's the bare minimum. That's not good enough. Hi, my name's Casey, this is Allison. Uh, we have our son Brooks and we're the Woodfin family. We thought Brooks was a really good baby. He was super calm, he slept a lot. When we went to the pediatrician, we both expected to go in there and come out relatively quickly. So when they started taking his temperature, you could see kind of the shock in her face. It was 94 to 95 degrees. When the doctor came in, she told us specifically to go to a children's hospital because they would have to do a spinal tap. And when I heard the word spinal tap, I knew that this probably wasn't going to be an easy fix. After the spinal tap, his health was declining and his liver panels were coming back and they were some of the worst these doctors have ever seen. So we had no idea what was going on. We just knew that our son was not in a good position and was in a fight for his life. They're explaining to us that they're, you know, gonna have to do, they're gonna have to put him in a medically induced coma and intubate him. And I don't think um, either one of us realized the gravity of that until they offered us to hold him. When Brooks was about seven days old, uh, we got the newborn screening back. The doctor let us know that Brooks had the most severe form of type one galactosemia, also known as classic galactosemia. They told us this was due to the Q188R mutation on his GALT gene. So at this point, they switched him over to a soy formula. But we weren't out of the woods yet. His liver was still failing. And due to his liver not functioning correctly, he developed a blood clot in his femoral artery. That was in his central line. That was the main feeding line or main line for any medicine. That line started to crash. I can still hear that alarm in, my, in the back of my head. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite fright. It's, it's a frightening thing. Nurses prepped us to have family come say hi and, and in a way by as well. My brother came to the hospital that night, flew in, you know, was, was here for maybe four hours. And I hugged him and the expectation was he would never see my son again. That next morning, it was a total turnaround. We were shocked when we got his labs back that next morning. That was a rejoiceful moment because we knew we might've been starting to win this battle. But at that point, it was, it was a focus for us to learn about this disease that our son had. After multiple conversations with the geneticists, it was presented to us as a disease that would be controlled by you know, a diet, essentially. She explained no dairy. But what I learned later on was that everybody's body naturally produces galactose and Brooks doesn't have the ability to break that down. And it's gonna affect him for the rest of his life. And so I think we both kind of had a moment where we had to recheck kind of what, what Brooks's future looks like. Just understanding that he was gonna have difficulties no matter what we did on the diet side, that was definitely a scary thought for both of us. So today Brooks is a very determined, happy little boy. If you just looked at us today, you would just assume that everything's normal. Brooks is already seeing some of the impacts of galactosemia. We see some of his head tremors or head twitches, sensory issues. There's some delays with speech. He was having some seizure-like activity and we we took him in to see a oh. neurologist and they decided to do an MRI and with that MRI they found that he did have some damage and with that damage we were noticing some right-sided weakness and what they recommended were to get him fitted for what we call are his magic boots and that helps keep his foot turned the correct way. While most children Brooks's age just see their pediatrician, Brooks has a team of 17 doctors that care for him. I also had to quit my job to take care of him and take him to these appointments. I think we're, we're kind of always walking on eggshells. We've got to be overly cautious as parents and make sure that whatever we put in front of him is as safe as possible. We do everything we can for Brooks, but that's still not enough. There's no treatment. We can go to our physical therapy, we can go to OT, but that's not gonna change the fact that he has galactosemia. 
The most difficult thing with galactosemia for me is just the unknowns. There's no indication of what Brooks's future is gonna look like. It has been hard to cope with realizing that this disease may prevent him from experiencing a lot of the things that we enjoyed growing up. I hope we do find the ability to treat this. I think a treatment for galactosemia would be incredible because as parents, we want the best for our kids. That's all we want. That's it. That's the ultimate thing we could ask for.